welcome to the Bioradiations podcast studio here at Biorad's headquarters in California. I'm your host, Laura Moriarty, and on the phone we have Dr. Paul Ryan. Welcome, Paul. Ah, thank you very much. Glad to be here. And so we're really excited to have Paul join us today. He currently holds the position of Chief Scientific Officer and VP of Bioanalytical Operations at the Biologics Development Services Company in, in Tampa, Florida, right, Paul? That's correct. Nice, warm, sunny Florida. (laughs) And then prior to that, he held a a bunch of positions of increasing responsibility over at Quintiles, also on the East Coast. And then prior to that, he also worked with... um, with the folks at BMS, so um, I don't want to say you've you've uh, been around, but it seems like you've kind of seen all sides of the spectrum. <laughs> yes, I've been around. <laughs> so, Paul, in today's podcast, I want to share with our listeners a small fragment of your expertise and knowledge on biosimilars. So, here we go. I'm, you know, I'm imagining that our audience knows that a biosimilar is it's kind of like what generic medicines are to, to small molecule drugs um, for a biologic. But I wonder if you could give us your, your expert description of what a biosimilar is and, and how it is different to the originator biological drug. Sure. So like you originally referenced, so traditional drug molecules are what we call small molecule. They're, they're basically... Um, chemical structures that can be synthesized in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. And when that drug is approved and put onto the market, a generic version of that drug can be chemically made so that it's structurally and the formulation is identical to the original drug. And those are called generics, right? Mm -hmm. So the uh, typical improvements that have been made over the last 10 to 20 years are what we call large molecules. Mm -hmm. So these molecules are are basically proteins, and they're very complex. They have sugars and different foldings, and they're way larger than these small molecules. And what happens is when you go to make a copy of that, the copies are not exactly alike the original. So it's not a true generic. Uh And instead, even though it has the same properties as the original, they're referred to as biosimilar. Got it. So it's not a generic. These are these are biosimilar. So they're alike, but they're not quite the same thing as the original drug. Got it. That makes, yeah. Okay. Got it. So with that in mind, you know, why is the pharma industry, why, why is biotech so hot for, for biosimilars right now? That's a great question. <laughs> so this new class of molecules called biologics, they have attributes and properties that are much improved over the traditional drugs. And by making a biosimilar to these drugs as they come off patent, the approval process for a biosimilar uh, is a shorter approval process as far in, in terms of how many clinical trials you have to conduct. There is a shortened version. Hmm. So the idea is that you can make a biosimilar to one of these drugs, like Humira, mm-hmm. and you can get that drug to market in a shorter amount of time than the actual innovator was able to. So you're, you're able to get a biosimilar approved with less investment up front. And the reason why pharmaceutical companies are moving towards this is because the market value for biosimilars is very high. Oh. So even though it costs less money to make the biosimilars, you right. can get your money back huh. by putting them on the open market to compete with the original drug. Wow. Now, I've been doing some reading on this, and I've seen that many... In, in some of the, the big farmers are initiating these big programs and focuses on, on biosimilars. Is that right? Absolutely. So what the large pharmaceutical companies are doing is they will spend billions of dollars putting a large molecule biologic on market first. Mm-hmm. And what they have been witnessing is other companies have made biosimilars mm-hmm. and have come along and starting to get those biosimilars approved, yeah. and they're beginning to take a market share. So rather than fight them, 
the large molecule companies are actually making getting into the biosimilar business themselves. And mm -hmm. in fact, there are examples of companies making a biosimilar to its own product. No way. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's, I'm sure financially it all makes sense somewhere down the line. Financially, it does make sense. Yeah. These biologics <laughs> have a, a lot of value. Yeah. And they have a lot of value for human health. Got it. So it's worth doing. Absolutely. No, I mean, and you think about the the diseases out there that really had, they the doctors had nothing to throw at it to, to, to uh, have an effective treatment um, to help prolong the life or even save a life. So absolutely, I'm super, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm, you know, I'm beginning to see the value more in these biologics as I could come up against those diseases and, and potentially need that treatment myself. So... <laughs> Not. <laughs> so, so one of the things I was reading about was this um, this totality of evidence. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 can you explain that to us and, and what it means in terms of biosimilars? Absolutely. So, going back to where we started the original podcast, we talked about generics, mm -hmm. which are chemically identical. Um, to the original drug being approved. And we talked about a biosimilar not being the exact copy of the drug. So the way the regulatory agencies view this is, okay, it's not exactly like the original drug, so it must be biosimilar. So in order to prove that it's a biosimilar, you have to do different experiments and different analysis. You have to conduct clinical studies. Right. And you have to show that the biosimilar is comparable to the original drug. Okay. And it's not just the clinical outcome. They look at the structure. Huh. They look at the sequence. They look at all of the different aspects of uh, what's required to put a biosimilar package together. And they refer to that as the totality of evidence. Mm -hmm. So these regulatory agencies will look at all of the data as a whole and make a decision of whether it's truly a biosimilar or whether it's completely different. Got so it. that's your totality of evidence. Got it. And then um, are there particular types of assays that, that people might be running as part of the, the, the gathering the totality of evidence material and data? Yeah. Absolutely. So there's some different buckets outside of the actual clinical trials, mm -hmm. which is one of the, the most important aspects of that. You have your biochemical analysis of it, where you do like sequence and size and purity, things like that. Mm -hmm. You also look at your uh, drug levels in your clinical trial population. So mm -hmm. that's your PK. Got it. You look at the immune response that's generated against these drug molecules, so that's called immunogenicity. Oh, so yeah. you have to look to make sure that you get the um, same type of immune responses if they do occur, uh, that occur to the original drug versus the biosimilar. Oh, I see. So you have all of these different types of analysis that mm -hmm. have to be done. Got it. So now with this, this focus on biosimilars, do you think that companies are going to just say, oh, well, forget it, we're just not going to make any more originator biologics or novel biologics? Well, I don't think so. Um, so the idea is that if you see a, a, a large molecule like Humira and it's coming off patent, mm -hmm. The market value for Humira is huge. Mm -hmm. So if you can make a biosimilar, you can still get a huge piece of that increasing market. The, there's over a dozen different biosimilar versions of Humira. Goodness me. They're actively <laughs> being produced right now. And all of them make it just a small piece of that market share, wow. but it's still worth doing. Yeah. And it drives down costs. But you you don't want to stop human health just at the existing drugs. You you want to keep making new drugs that are better mm -hmm. and to hit these different diseases. So these pharmaceutical companies are still very much interested in new drugs mm -hmm. and new and establishing new markets. Excellent. So it's Excellent. not going to go away. It, it's just something that's kind of popped up, mm -hmm. if if you will. Got it. No, that makes sense. So. We're, you know, we're both sitting here uh, in the U.S., but 
Do you see any differences around the world in terms of, um, you know, countries producing biosimilars or their own regulatory agencies approving biosimilars? Oh, absolutely. So the European community is by far more experienced in getting the biosimilars approved than the United States. And there's a lot of biosimilar companies all over Europe. And if you look at the Asian market, there's also a, a large number of companies that are making biosimilars in like India mm -hmm. and Korea and Japan. And it, so there's, it is truly a worldwide phenomenon, mm -hmm. absolutely. So do you think that um, there's a – do you think the U.S. is potentially behind these other regions of the world and other countries of the world in, in terms of adopting biosimilars? Uh, actually, the U.S. is, is, is kind of lagging. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Most of the biosimilars have already been on the market and approved in Europe and also in India huh. way before they get approved in the United States. So wow. the United States is actually lagging. And these other con countries, particularly the European community, I, I think they've been doing this a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I think you're going to continue to see more and more companies get involved in the biosimilar market. Mm -hmm. And it's beneficial to all of us because these biologics are really expensive. Yeah. And having alternatives at a much lower rate that have the exact same drug um, benefits is, is something that we all want. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, providing them to, to give more access to, to patients who don't have health insurance or cu countries where they, they don't spend as much money on, on health for their, for their citizens. I think, yeah, it's, it's really promising for everybody. Yeah. And the other ad advantage is that the biosimilar companies are often able to make the biosimilar versions cheaper and and more of more um, have a higher yield than the original drug. I mean, th if you think about it, take something like Humira. That mm -hmm. drug's been been manufactured for over t like 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and if you take the more modern ways of making these drugs, you can make them at a less costly and a uh, a, a much faster production rate than you could 20 years ago. Oh, so wow. the cost I, I see is going to continue to come down and that's good. F that's good for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. I mean, it sounds like the future is, is super promising for, for biosimilars and um, yeah, this is, this is great information. Thank you so much, Paul, for, for joining us on the phone today, for sharing some of your expert knowledge. Absolutely. And the pleasure is always mine. Thank you so much, Paul, and thank you, folks, for listening. Come back soon for a more exciting life science podcast. Bye-bye for now.